Hello, welcome to another video. Today we're going to do a quick run through of the 64 bit version of a live 3.8.4 beta. So, if you used to go onto their website, you can download a free version of the 32 bit beta, but for the 64 bit version, they are asking for some small donations just during the development process. I did make a donation, but I also emailed them to see if I can get a little cheeky free link. Um, I did get the link, but it was after I'd already made the donation, so that's all good. We're going to go ahead with the installer. So, we're at the live installer now. I've just got to choose my language. So we need to go for ENGB or ENUK or something like that. Here we go, ENGB for Great Britain, English Great Britain. And then I'm gonna to wanna to go for just GB now, Great Britain. There we go, English UK. Just click OK on that. Right, it's gonna load some things up now. It's a lot quicker when you're doing this off the disk. This is just because we're on the live USB. Here we go. Select features to automatically start on your desktop. To add or remove them later, you must edit your file. Are we done? Well, I'm just going to read that again. Some features, <laughs> select features to automatically start on your desktop. To add or remove them later, you must edit your file. .e16 slash startup applications dot list. So we'll probably go into that a bit later because I'm going to install a few things I'm going to want to have start up at boot. So we'll click OK. Okay. Use OpenGL and Cairo Doc. OpenGL allows you to use hardware acceleration, reducing CPU load to a minimum. So we're just going to enable that. You have multiple blah 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 blah. Nope. So I've already got a mirror going for the screen, so I don't need to do any of that. Right. Is that loaded everything? Can we get into the installer? So the installer's down here. We'll go through everything on the desktop once we're fully installed. I just thought I'll show you the installation process if you wanted to do this yourself. Please connect to the internet. So there we go. It's opened up a little internet thing for us here. Um, do, 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 do. Try and remember what the password is off the top of my head. I've got a terrible memory, so if I've done that right, congratulations to me. <laughs> no, I didn't think I did. Let's try it one more time. think we're probably ah we are correct okay cool so we can go to yep please connect to the internet the installation process blah 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 yep okay so it's gonna update the installer before it loads it up any day now uh -huh. Not many people report bugs these days. Do you want to help us by enabling automatic reports for when a problem happens? Yeah, let's go for yes. Enter your email. Oh, sorry guys, not for this video. All right, transferring bytes at the light of speed. Probably be done now because it's going at the speed of light. Okay, click to reveal information about the features. So special optimizations for automated partitioning. Details includes correct alignment of partition to the physical blocks, SSD features, selection of the best combination of your file system to obtain the best performance, optional encryption and delayed data flushes to extend the lifetime of your disk. We strongly we strongly suggest this mode, but your disk can still be manually partitioned. So we're just going to go for all of the recommended here. Mutating frogs with unicorns, huh? Okay, you have an older version. Yes, we hang on do you want to continue in upgrade mode no we don't so we're going to do a whole install so we're going to go to automatic use the entire disk and then it'll... arranging some atoms in the universe here we go so this was the laptop that i did the recent video on that failed on void linux because it's only got flash emcc memory whatever it's called but i've found an old M.2 and it had a spare slot so we've got a new sort of test bed laptop for, for distributions to use when the other one's out of order so we're going to select this disk here I'm going to click OK you are going to erase your entire disk to install eLive yes okay um, I'm not going to be doing encryption for this one that's fine right partitioning your hard disk this can take some time ah went too quick do you want to use the EFI partition, blah, 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 yeah, whatever. 
should be fine. I'm not even. I think there might be an old Windows installation on the um, on the EMC on the flash memory. What came with the laptop? All right. So it's partitioning our disk still. Mutating frogs with unicorns. Then again, you can never mutate as as too many frogs with unicorns. It seems. Arranging some atoms in the universe. Alive is being installed into your hard disk. Please be patient. Okay, this little part takes quite a while, so I'm going to pause the video and then we'll come back to it. Okay, we've got to the next part of the installer here. So features for Alive. Select the features you want to have installed. Deselecting them can make your system lighter. I'm going to leave that as that. So we're going to go to OK. Select special hardware features you want to have. Um, I'm going to leave that as well. OK. Select the applications you want to have by deselecting them and you can save some disk space. So again, I'm just going to leave that as the defaults there. Select the web browser you want to use. One or the other works better on different computers and some alternatives use less resources. So I quite like this part of the installer. So I, in fact, I actually quite like the whole idea of the way it installs things. It lets you do quite a lot of sort of customization before you get it installed. Applications wise, it even lets you deselect unnecessary stuff to slim things out a bit, which we'll get onto in a moment. I'm going to leave that again as the defaults. Here we go. Select some special features to make your Alive system even lighter. So I'm, again, I'm not going to take any of this away, but if I was you know, looking to get something really light, then there's quite a few options here that you could do. But we're going to go OK. Um, select some non-free software that you want to have. So I'm going to get rid of Dropbox. I don't really use Dropbox these days. So we're going to go OK. Right, configuring the installed system. And then this is a list of the packages you want to keep installed in your system across reinstallations in upgrade mode. That's quite cool. So you just write the packages there. Let's click OK. Installing and removing packages, this operation can take a while. So once again, we are going to pause. Oh wait, before we do that, so it opens it up in a terminal for you and then it will go through a series of commands if you like. So we're going to pause the video and then we'll come back to it once that's finished. Okay, so it's finished with that part. That took quite a while. I'm not quite sure how long it was, but it was a little bit of time. Right, user's real name. It's certainly not John Smith. Um, email for Gravatar. I'm not going to bother with that. Password. Okay, so you've got some checkboxes here. Auto login, I'll keep check. Privileges, yep. Grant admin sudo, yep. Grant admin and never request, yeah. No, I don't think so. Okay. Installing and removing packages. This operation can take a while. Here we go. Host name, we're just going to leave it as a live Tyler. I think I'm alive. Configuring the install system. Please be patient. So again, we will pause it and come back. Okay, that's all done now. That wasn't the fastest installation I've ever been through, but never mind. So we're going to go to click OK. So your computer has Windows installed. If you oh, it must be on the old flash drive. So we're going to go OK. So we're not quite installed yet. My bad. Congratulations, you have installed. Right, we're ready to go. So we're going to do a reboot. Okay, cool. Do you want to save this configuration? Um, usually I'd say yes, but I'm not going to bother. Right, select features to automatically start on your desktop. So Compositor, Conkey, and Cairo Doc, same as what we saw in the installer. Right, the amazing touchpad configurator for Alive. Let's have a look here. Scroll using two fingers. Yeah, we'll keep that. Natural scrolling, no. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, that seems fine to me. I'm not getting any tap to click, hang on. Does tap to click not work? Is there anything that says tap to click on here? Double tap to lock your mouse drag. Um, no. Okay. Um, OpenGL, yeah, we'll enable that. Oh, these sounds. I am, I am going to have to disable these sounds quickly before we do anything else. Um, so how would I do that? Settings. Anything for sound? Hmm. What about this one here? Sound. Bye bye sounds apply. Okay, cool. It's a very musical desktop. Um, I don't like any sort of system sounds. Like they kind of wind me up a bit. Right, select the audio that you want to have played. No intro song, thank you very much. Oh, tap to click work then. 
Ah, tap to click is working, perfect. Right, let's just run through this a minute. Enlightenment version 0.16.8. The documentation is intended to take you step by step. If you're reading this right now and have managed to get blah, 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 please remember that if you're using a theme other than the brush metal that it may look slightly different, and that's fine. E16 is your Windows manager. It's a large and complex program and is by no means perfect. Resources, some links here. Documentation index, what's on here? We have using menus, mouse bindings, default desktops, default key bindings. Let's keep this one open just while we have a little look around. Right, so here is our desktop. We have a con key on the right here, which is the space and system information, RAM, disk usage and network. We have a Cairo dock at the bottom here. We have a workspace switcher here, or pager if you'd like to call it. And then it's got 12 by the looks of it. Um, six with one wallpaper and six with another so quite a nice easy way to change your look and feel on the fly we have at the top left a Wi-Fi network so your networks thing there we have notifications here and there's that clipboard that we enabled as well right let's oh, hold, what's this CD as well okay so you've got like a little jukebox thingy here with some radio stations I'm um, not too fussed about that, so how do we close this? Quit. There we go. Right, let's have a look at what it comes installed with out of the box. So, I'll tell you what, let's use this menu here instead. Here we go. So let's start by accessories. We have XPad, terminology, screenshot, onboard, Kupfer, Gino, FS Lint, fonts, disks, catfish file search, calculator, and then there's a another folder here so you've got gvim vim and skype you've got play on linux and virtualbox installed out of the box you have archive manager backups which looks like deja dup brazero funar is your file manager okay that's accessories in internet we have transmission for your torrents chromium is your web browser but do remember any installer you can choose a different one or have multiple ones we have xchat irc nicotine and netsurf and also links to which is another browser text-based browser in sound we have audacious audacity mix music brains picard pulse audio rhythm box sound juicer volume control and yashimi and then it has some web applications for music youtube and spotify let's go into graphics now so we have dark table ebook viewer illicit ePhoto, eRuler, GIMP, GTK Digital Camera Browser, Image Magic, Inkscape, LRF Viewer, Luminance, HDR, Raw Therapy, Shotwell, Simple Scan, and View Noir. That's in your graphics. And in video, you have oh, that's quite a few here. You have Avid Marks, Cheese, Sin, Diverger, NG, DVD Encoder, OGM Rip, <clears throat> Flow Blade Movie Editor, Kodi, SM Player, VLC Media Player, and Voco Screen, which is a screen recorder. In Office, you have the full LibreOffice suite. You have Asana, Calendar, and Mind Maps. You have Calibre there and an ebook editor. In Games, you have Scum VM. Um, Fury of the Furries, okay. Uh, <laughs> DSMU, so you've got an emulator there. DOSBox emulator, Higan, um, Puzzles, Suckerban, Fury of the Furries again, okay. Um, web applications, you have Games and Watch, MS DOS Games. And in education, there's quite a lot of applications installed. You have Calibre, Ebook Reader, Clavaro, and then you have some web apps for a few things here. You've got TED Talks, Vsauce, okay. Um, programming, you have Elementary Perf, Icon Browser, Meld, and the Skype Text Editor. And then in Alive, you have your hotkeys, your install, Alive in a USB and travel with it, that's quite cool. Maintain Alive Alive, okay. And then in Programs, you have Source Code, Collaborate with Alive, and then in Help, you have links to their forums, Help, Chat, and Frequently Asked Questions, and a Facebook page there, I'm going to assume. And then in your preferences, you have admin shared, customized look and feel. Which one is this? Is this use e is this the XFCE or LX? I'm not too sure. So that's most of the applications there. What we're going to do now is just have a little look around, sort of how it feels to use a desktop. So the left click or two finger if you're on a touchpad brings up this menu here where you can restart about this theme. You can change themes here, I do believe. So I do believe we are on... I'm not too sure. Let's go through a few of these and see how they look. 
Okay, so that's a slightly lighter theme there. Let's open up a file manager as well. Let's open up documents, for example. And then let's go to help and about. So it's using Funar version 1.8.4. This is all based on a Debian buster, I do believe. Okay. Do we have splitting? Can we do a side-by-side -side split on the desktop? Not with a mouse. So let's have a look at some of these default keys here. Do we have any splitting? Stick, unstick the currently. Okay. Kill the current window. Previous desktop. Control Alt left and right. So these are the Control Alt left and right. So it also works with all directional keys. So right, down, up. So it's. I can't get onto the second lot though by doing that. So how would I do that? I'll just go like that. And then I could move again inside this box and then go back. Okay. Right. I'm going to change this theme again to a different one. I'm not a massive fan of this one here. So themes. Let's go for black. Huh. So it's giving me like half a bar there. Um, okay. I'm going to change that one. I'm not a massive fan of that either. What about blue steel? Huh. There you go. There's your windows and blue steel. We're going to leave it on blue steel while we have a little look around now. So how do we... Do you minimise things? don't think so. What's this button do here? Ah, so it minimises things to here and you get a little funny minimise and restore animation there. Sort of flips about a bit. So let's keep that minimised. Let's open up a terminal and see if we have HTOP installed out of the box. We do. So we're using 500 megabytes of RAM. So that's very light, to be honest, for what you get on the screen here. And um, we will do a final RAM reading just after we've had a bit more of a look around at boot to see what we're getting at boot. But that's you know that's looking pretty impressive so far. And like I say, you can slim it down even more so in the installer. So that's pretty damn cool. So let's have a look at Cairo Doc. So we have an applications menu here like we looked at, and you can also search. Hit enter and it will open up that application. Yes. Um, I do not remember where the auto start program was. I think it's like, hmm. No, I don't know where it is. Ah, here we go. Right, so what's in here? You have eConfig, bindings, what's in your init there? Let's go into init and see what's in there. I'll tell you what, let's just ls it. No such, what? Oh, it's because we're not even inside. Sorry, my bad. Right, so in here we have buttons, snapshots, windows, um, okay, interesting. Right, what we're going to do is just go on to auto start a live Google and just rem remind myself where they've stored that. Um, auto start program alive. So where is the file that we need to edit. <clears throat> hmm. Hold on a minute. Is that already created or do we have to make it? Ah, it's already there. So adding more programs to here will let you do that at auto boot. So I'm probably going to install Albert, the application launcher, and I'm going to want to have that at boot. I won't be doing that now though, I just wanted to take a look at it. So let's get rid of this. Oh, my escape button's not working. Right, what we're going to do is do a very quick reboot, get a RAM reading, and then just have a little play around with some applications, and then we're going to end the video there. So let's do a quick reboot now. And then we'll see how quick it starts up as well. I have had to change it in the boot menu there though, so bear that in mind. All right, we're at Grub, loading initial RAM disk. 
and we are on. I think. <laughs> okay, and we are on. But I didn't save the monitor settings very stupidly. So we are still extended, but I'm going to do a, a HTOP reading before I open anything. Okay, so we're getting 440 megabytes RAM there at boot, as you can see it there. What we're going to do now, though, is do the monitor again, because we didn't save it. We didn't think I'd be doing a restart. So we went into settings. No, that's the wrong one. User menus, there we go. Settings in here, and then we go to screen settings and then we're going to do the same thing again and oh we did save it so we should be able to open the one we saved hopefully so let's go to open and we should have our mirror there there we go now let's click apply done cool I'll get rid of that Okay, so that's minimized. Let's minimize that as well. So it's quite cool actually the way you minimize it. So you get a nice little sort of view of what you've got open there. So I just want to have a little bit more look with this sort of switcher here. So let's go onto this colored desktop and see how it looks like that. See, I think that's a nicer look. I think I prefer that. So in maintenance, what can we do? So let's purge config file cache. Purge, very straightforward there. Let's try something else. Let's purge all caches. Done. Okay. Right, we're going to have a quick look at Cairo Dock at some of the things we might not have looked at, and then we shall end the video there. So you get a battery icon here, which tells you how long it will charge, and clicking that will then also reveal some more information about your battery there. Um, a live hotkeys. So let's just have a quick look at these. So what does a full screen application look like? It looks like that. Okay. Send to the desktop, resize, desktop controls, let's have a look here, change desktop number, lock desktop, launchers. Oh, so we have a launcher, Alt escape, let's see how that looks. Escape button's not working. So let's type to search something like Chromium. Oh, okay, I might not bother installing L, but actually it's got one already in there for you. That's pretty cool. And we are using Chromium version 7.9.0.3945.130. Oh, um, I'm just going to open up LibreOffice as well. Um, using that application launcher we just found out about. So let's type in Writer. Um, we don't need some tips. And then we're going to click OK. Let's full screen that to see how that looks in full screen. Nope. I must say these buttons are very small. Is that full screen? That's sticky. Hmm, okay. What if we drag it, will that give us a... No. Anyway, let's go on to tools and about. Um, help and about, sorry. I just want to see what version we've also got here. Version 6.4.03, not too bad. Okay, I'm going to wrap the video up there. But actually, it's quite an interesting little distribution this once it's got more of a stable release i will give it a proper review on the channel but that's just sort of been an overview of enlightenment 16 that's been a live 3.8.4 the beta 64-bit version thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and i will see you on the next one bye bye